What's up, guys? I hope you guys come over from the other stream. So I did a little stream with my iPhone uh, 14 Pro, and it looked like it was a little blurry. So I'm going to chalk that up to the phone and the internet and probably just something not being able to carry it fast enough. So hopefully this is better. Uh, we'll see. I think I'm going to have to delete that other one. I don't really want to, but I don't really want to continue having like, um, you know, people will be confused on the thumbnails. And this thumbnail is terrible because I had to take it with my uh, iPhone 14 and then I couldn't do Canva to do all the good stuff. So I'm probably going to just back out of that other live just so that people don't get confused. Delete forever. Such a hard thing to do. Okay. We're good to go. All right, guys. Thank you, No One Designs. I appreciate you. Back to two people in the chat. Re-hit the thumbs up if you guys could. I, I'm going to just start it back over. Okay, so we are uh, going live here. I had uh, 58 items with uh, $1,200 plus dollars in sales. I got through some of them already, and I'm going to do the, the shout-out again for the Bearded Banshee. If you guys uh, don't know the Bearded Banshee, uh, go check him out on Instagram, YouTube. He sells beard oils, and the reason that I'm talking about him is because the other day, uh, yesterday, there was like this event in the town where a bunch of vendors set up, and I talked to him about his payment processor, and he said, I can sign up for Square, and I can get the free mag strip reader for like your credit cards. I was about to spend $300 on the terminal for um, Square, and instead of sending spending that $300, he said, hey, just sign up. They give you a free one, and then you know if you feel like getting the terminal or upgrading to the actual like iPad and stand setup, which is probably a bit better than just start off with that one for free. It's Android, iPhone, you know, both compatible. You can get either one. So thank you, Bearded Banshee. If you guys need beard oils, if you guys like to look good like me, if you have uh, husbands, dads, grandpas, anybody who wants a, a good scent, there's two of them that are really good that I like. Um, he's got as far as like sweets all the way to like your more uh, old school, like, you know, just that, just that old school type smell, you know, where you're just like, oh man, that's, that's strong. But it's like, if you're a burly man, then yeah, you're good to go. So uh, thank you, Bearded Banshee. Wanted to get him a, a little shout out for helping me out. He's local to Wichita Falls. So awesome, man. Appreciate it. Miss Lachey. Hey, happy Mother's Day. Yes, you too. Thank you. I will let Stephanie know she's with her grandpa right now. And I am doing the live and working on my shippings. And then we're going to like probably get some food later or something like that. I told her Mother's Day is now her day, not just because she's a mother, but because she shares the same birthday as my son. So they are birthday buddies. He's going to be taking over that day for himself for the next, let's just call it 18 years. And then she is going to get Mother's Day as her Mother's Day and birthday. So I was like, whatever you want to do, go ahead and do it. But yeah, thank you. Thank you. Um, say hi. Happy Mother's Day to all your mothers out there or your friends that are mothers, anybody. Uh, my wife, Stephanie is the best mom ever and my mom of course is right up there too so thank you guys for for doing everything that you guys do all right so we got the stream back that's okay i am um you know i'm feeling pretty good about it it looks like my mother-in-law did call and leave a message so i'm gonna listen to this voicemail um during some of the shed bought some that are worth a lot of money okay yeah it looks like she's got some inventory for me or something so that's pretty cool um, I did get a lead on some free inventory this week and I was going to it and I kind of forgot on the last stream that I was doing, but I talked to all the, all the women's consignment stores and things like that. And I tell them that, Hey, I'm setting up a buy trade store in my town. So if you have anybody who brings men's items that you guys don't process, send them my way, have them give me a call. So I was able to go meet a customer, a gentleman and his wife at the other, um, at the consignment store, the women's one. And they said, hey, I have all these men's clothes. So I flipped through all the men's clothes. And honestly, he only had one. It was a Nike vintage like pullover. And I said, I can pay you for this shirt. I said, but honestly, the rest of these are great clothing, but I'm not um, interested in buying them. And I said, I can donate them for you if you want. I said, and then and then maybe that'll work. But at the same time, I only pay you for the one. He goes, you know, just take all of them. I'm not even concerned about getting payment. He says, you donating them or, or like hauling them off for me is good. And then he also had a bunch of his wife's clothes, which I don't know the, the margins on them. And I told him I couldn't really buy those. He said, look, just take it, you know, do whatever, um, donate them, keep them, give them to your, you know, relatives, whatever. So I was able to get a bunch of items. And then some of the items at zero cost of good have a chance of making five to $6 profit. So I was able to pull some of the items from there. And then I did donate the rest to, um, you know, the, the donation places. So 
it's tough when you're like, well, why did you keep some of his inventory when you can sell it on eBay and make a profit? Honestly, the profit is so low. I'd only be able to offer him like, like nothing. I mean, I wouldn't be interested in taking that risk on an item that sells in a year for, you know, $10 shipped. But if you have zero cost of goods, you can maybe make like three to $5 on that shirt. So that's kind of what I did. And that's pretty much what the business is, but I'm going to be trying to put money, people in, but trying to put money in people's hands. It's just sometimes if they have a bunch of like target clothes or Walmart clothes or like uh, some of that stuff, you just can't, you can't make a profit on it. And I don't want to just give money out and not make money. So the best thing I can do is like, uh, like I said, offer him the money and then offer the service of taking it out of his car, which uh, he was really happy to get. So we got uh, no one design says, I know a few storefront owners who started out buying a refurbished and pre-owned terminal. And when the business ramped up, they bought new terminals. Yeah. So, and, and the other thing is if you know how to sell on eBay, like all many of you guys do who are watching, I could buy that $300 terminal. And in a year, if the business fails, or if I decide not to go the buy, sell trade storefront route, I could probably resell that for two, two fifty because it's still going to be a good device. And that's, yeah, that's, that's a good idea though. Buying a refurbished one. That's, that's a really good idea. I get weird about electronics though. I like to buy new. I like them fresh, fresh and new. Oh yeah, great job plugging the plugging the moms. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's important to appreciate the mothers. I mean, I, I do a lot of stuff for my son and I know she's been um, pumping to get him that, that fresh breast milk and, and things like that. And she pumps all the time. It, it takes a lot of effort and energy and, and calories from her. So, um, but it, he's super chunky. Like he's doing way better with the with the combination of formula and breast milk. And now he's on oatmeal and squash. So he's loving that too. No one design says, see, like I said before, people will give you free clothing. I, I still stick with never pay for pickup service on clothes. Yeah. And, and the thing is like, um, I do feel like if, if I have like a shirt, that vintage Nike pullover is probably like a $35 like item, maybe 30 bucks. Like I wouldn't mind giving them $5, but I'm not going to say like, Hey, I'll take them, but I'm not paying for anything. Cause I, I'm trying to set up a buy, sell trade store. That's the other thing about it too. Cause I want people to bring like, you know, good items, but yeah, that, I mean, no one designs was right. All right. You're right, man. You said, Hey, start that service. It's a good idea. He, he drove an Escalade. I mean, he, he had some money and he was just like, look, I don't need all these clothes. And a lot of it was, um, Dockers, Greg Norman, um, Alan Flusser, like some of the stuff. And it wasn't like the fancy stuff. It was just like slacks, like his business wear, George, things like that. Um, so anyway, I, I, I found a couple items I'm going to be able to sell, which I'm happy about. But yeah, it worked out. It was a really cool thing. And then my my wife got some uh, the women's clothes. And then I was able, a lot of the women's leggings are like uh, green green tea leggings or something like that. That that brand seemed to be decent. This is a pair of Travis Matthew golf shorts, though, if you guys are looking for that. Oh, man, I'm glad nine people came over. I feel like a lot of people are like, yeah, that was a, a bad stream, so let's stop watching. So a little uh, – it was my fault. I tried to experiment. I wanted to give a better uh, picture quality, and instead I gave a worse one. But I will um, eventually upgrade the cameras. Now, when you guys see people streaming and it looks super clear, just know that camera is likely like – probably like a $700 camera, like 500 plus for the camera. My webcam I think was like 50 bucks, and I bought it years ago. but. Um, the people who have the real crispy one have like really expensive cameras. So congrats to those people. Maybe if I get another YouTube check this month, I can uh, look into upgrading. But honestly, I want to get the MacBook Pro. And I bet you I could stream. I bet you the camera on there is way better than this one. So that would be kind of like a twofer. Bam. No one design says you have to understand people with money don't care about a few bucks or throw them their way. Um, they just want old clothes out of their house and you offer to pick up helps them. Yeah, I suppose so. I suppose so. You are on to something there. Here's the, um, the, uh, BDU camo. This sold for 20 bucks plus eight 99 shipping. So close to $30 on these. These are the ones that I picked up in Lawton. Actually not this exact one, but I picked a lot of these up in Oklahoma for four bucks. Pretty good. I fit it in this envelope and it's going to be a little tight, but trust me, I've done this. It'll fit. I do put a piece of tape on it though. Cause the, the thing can tear sometimes. Yeah. Video quality seems to have diminished since you started. And, and that's, and do you mean on this stream or do you mean on the other one? Cause the other one started off strong and then, um, it, it's like the phone just couldn't keep up for some reason. Oh man. I ran out of tape. Hold on. 
See, I ran out like the eBay tape. Okay. So I got like eBay tape up there, but I don't want you guys to see my legs. You said the video. Don't restart, just go with it. No, no, no. Uh, no one designs. My other one was blurry. It was like super laggy. Um, let me see. I'm going to open up the stream over here and see if it's lagging some. I've never really had this happen before, so I wonder if something's going on. Curious. I know the thumbnail looks bad. Jeez. Let's just take a look. Oh, I hate seeing ads on your own stuff, man. I need to buy a YouTube premium. Yeah, this one's a bit blurry, but you don't have to restart. Just go with it. Well, still, I want to see like what's going on. Oh, it's yeah. I mean, it's not great. It's not great. But that's what I was talking about, like the camera, right? Now it's clear. Hmm. OK. Well, I'm going to turn that off. It's weird seeing like myself in too many screens. OK. Ugh. Got the eBay tape here. Yeah, man, it's video camera. And that's why I like to try to set the lights up and stuff. And it does make a, a bit difference, like a bit of a difference, but it's not. Honestly, it's the camera. That's what I learned from some creators. It is the camera. That means that's how that's, I mean, the lighting is important too, but a lot of it is the power of the camera. So uh, how do you, do you guys have any tips on how to find the end of the tape? Okay, I found it. Usually the eBay tape has like a little paper thing, I think. I don't know if this one did or not. Hmm. Looks like eBay Slack and it didn't have that little that tab to help you get it off. You might have too many junk leeching your internet. Huh. Like other people? Or like um, do you think it's like stuff on my computer? Cause yeah, I always worry about like the bloatware, you know, the stuff that kind of lags your computer. I'm just not that savvy in it. And also, like, I don't know. I don't want to get into, like, computer stuff. It's not that interesting, and I don't know a whole lot about it, so I won't get too deep in, into all that. But, yeah, this one is uh, Priority Mail. So, yeah, you can see how thick it is, right? I don't know if you guys do that, but I do jeans and shoes even in the Priority Envelopes. Yeah, I've got the AC unit, the AC unit running in my garage as well just because – it's getting hot in Texas. Like yesterday was a hot, hot day. I mean, it was probably, uh, shoot, I don't know, like 85, maybe 90 degrees. But uh, the sun actually took a lot out of me. I hadn't been outside. Like I don't do a lot of outdoor uh, work or anything like that. I mean, I mowed this week, which, well, I mowed like last week. I mowed Monday morning, I think. And I'm already going to have to mow again because we had like a good amount of rain. So that's kind of annoying, but uh, I had to do more maintenance last time. This is a Carhartt. This is a uh, short sleeve plaid. It sold for nine plus eight nine nine shipping. So you're right at what is it? Uh, Seventeen dollars for an XL. So yeah, that's it's not great, but you know these are the sales that that push the store on through, right? Like you want to get those sales up if you're running volume. You cannot run this type of business very profitable if you're not selling enough items it's just too it's just too tight on them you know just left your message for later okay so we're gonna get that going yeah sales have been good though people ask like our sales slow and stuff like sales seem to be okay we've got another ralph lauren this is the um it's a linen blend so yeah any linen blend stuff is usually pretty good no one designs uses the priority for jeans and jackets and blazers. Yeah, I agree. They are absolutely good for that. So yeah, this is linen bent linen blend. It went for 12 plus shipping. I don't know if it had any flaw on it or if it just wasn't like that desirable or kind of old looking. It's 8.3 ounces with the bag. So I'm gonna see if this will bring it straight to eight ounces so I can get that cheaper rate. 8.1. Oh man. I knew. <laughs> I knew a person who would like just cheat on it because he did the pickups. And I'm like, dude, that's not a good way to build the business. Like you need to have the exact amount uh, or more so that you don't get that little bill. But you know, sometimes they don't weigh all of them, uh, but I'm not, I'm not risking. I'm definitely, I'm just going to pay up or whatever. If it's over, then you pay what it is. So get the next one out and I'm starting to put my inventory that I pull in these boxes. I made a reel about it. The only thing about it, though, like the tubs, it was stacked, right? So you just go down the tub. 
this one you have to like like move over to like kind of tighten it up or else it's all like falling down so i still i like the tubs but i, I do like the boxes too so i really need to figure out um a better method I, I don't know i mean i just saw a few people doing this and decided to, to try it and it, it seemed okay at least it there's no mistake as far as like filing them in order like the tubs sometimes they can slide from one side to the other and that can be a little bit of an issue all right this is a vineyard vines short sleeve polo i actually was going to keep this polo that sold but um i just don't wear a lot of polos man i wear a lot of crew neck uh, t-shirts this shirt actually is too small these anytime you get like freebie shirts you got to go a size up because they make them so cheap that they shrink all the time and i i don't know so this one went for 1007 plus 899 shipping so right at like 19 dollars for the vineyard vines blue polo let's see no one design says i get the 8 by 10 poly bags to reduce weight uh, the bags I use are nine by 12 and seven and a half by 10. Yeah, that's a good idea too. I've thought about that. I used to, um, when I was really, uh, when I was really strapped for cash, I would cut like the poly bags and tape them. And I don't know how much weight that really saved, but I would try to do that as much as I could just to get that extra dollar on, uh, on the sale. Sean, with the new USPS prices, some things are now cheaper just sending priority versus flat rate. Interesting. That is interesting. I need to look into that. But I mean, like, the priority flat rate, I don't think has gone up just yet. But I guess if it does go up, then maybe the priority will be better. But maybe you're right. I, I don't know. I really don't ship uh, priority very often. That's not flat rate, you know. All right, we got a pair of Hurley. This is a Chino Bay Shorts. It went for $8.99 plus $8.99, so not great. I mean, honestly, these types of Chinos, sometimes they do well and sometimes they don't, you know. But they do sell, so I try to just buy stuff that sells, you know. It seems obvious, but I don't mind doing the extra shipping work. I mean, a lot of this stuff, too, you get, like, the credit card points for all the transactions and the money you get, so... There's a credit card out there that I'm going to get, and it adds uh, 3% cash back on shipping labels. So it's through Chase. I haven't got it yet because I just got a different credit card through Chase. Um, the Business Inc. Uh, let's see. Are you guys big on credit cards? This one's the Business Unlimited Inc. through Chase. So if you spend six grand in four months, no, three months. I think it's three months, six grand, then you get $750 bonus cash. So I'm going to take that, put it in the bank, and then I'm going to um, get another credit card and try to get some miles so that uh, my wife can take a trip, get her some flyer miles. And I, I, I forgot which one that one was called, but it's through Chase. It's a good one as well. And it's cool because if you have two credit cards through the same bank, right, then the one that only does cash back, you can actually convert the points to the miles if you have the other card. And maybe you can do that even without the other card. I'm not sure, but, you know, it's, that's pretty cool. It's a pretty cool thing. This was a, a combined order. So this was a Duluth 2XL and a Royal Robins 2XL. And the buyer is all in for $40.31 on two shirts, one label. Alex Trevino, what's up, man? We talked in the Salvation Army. I completely had you confused with somebody else. And then when I saw your socials, I was like, that's you. But your socials, you didn't have glasses. So, like, um, that threw me off a lot, man. I hope – and I hope I am accurate that you are the uh, a vintage seller from Salvation Army. So, my bad, man. My bad. It's hard. I meet a lot of people, man. And a lot of times I only see the little icon. And then um, even in person, I just – I don't know. I need to write notes, man. Alex Trevino says that's not me. <laughs> okay, man. Okay, great. Great. Well, there's a guy at your doppelganger's out there. See, he's a he's a little bit like thicker in the face and he has glasses. And I was like, dang it. That's all good, man. I don't think we I've met you in person. Okay. See, I've been meeting a lot of people at thrift stores that uh, watch the channel. And it's um yeah, I get I get confused, man. 
there is something too that um I don't know if you guys knew this, but not to get like too political, but like um, Bill Clinton had this thing when he was in college. He would carry a notepad around, and anytime he met somebody, he would write their name and their occupation, and then he would write what they talked about. And then whenever um, he wanted to call on them for help on whatever it is, he would call and say, "Hey, remember we had this conversation?" And that's how. And he and they asked why he did that once, and he said, "Well, I plan to be president one day." And this was when he was in college, so um, that's still that's a good strategy to use. Like when you meet somebody, write down what you guys talked about, and some people say send the follow up email, but I've also heard a thing where you can only keep track of so many like close friends in your head at one time. Like it's very hard to have more than I think it was like 50 people like currently like floating through your head um, at one time. So, yeah, I don't know, man. I need to I need to start taking notes because uh, I'm just not I, I like I keep track of stuff that's relevant for like that moment or that um, that week or whatever. If it's like in the forefront. So right now, a lot of it is my son. A lot of it is like the business, my employee. Like I try to keep that stuff fresh in the front of my mind. Everybody that I meet and talk to, like I enjoy it, but sometimes I just forget. I just forget. But dang. One day, Alex, one day I'll see <laughs> the real. Yeah, just be like, hey, I'm the real Alex Trevino. And see, I know another guy named Trevino um, that does clothes. Okay, this is a true religion, Henley. I really thought this true religion, Henley, would go for more. It only went for 10 plus shipping. Not really sure. A lot of brands that I don't pick up very often, I usually just take whatever comes in. So, uh, and it wasn't like a great one. I've, I've definitely had a better True Religion one sell for more money. This one was more of like a standard one. So, Flip It Good, what's up? I'm glad you made it to the good stream. That other stream didn't work out. And some people said this one's still like a little shaky with the, the quality, but um, man, it's just one of those things. Oh man, so this is a planes. I just got a an offer on two things actually. This one's a planes. Uh, you know the planes pearl snap, planes western wear. It's a green plaid. It had like massive armpit stains, and I didn't see it. I guess so. This guy, I usually list those at six ninety nine plus eight ninety nine shipping. So it's seven plus nine, so sixteen dollars. He offered five bucks, so I'm gonna accept that offer all day long. Cause when I buy like items with stains or holes, like I just. I price it low and I just try to get it going. I don't, especially if you've already done the photos, just like, just list it. Cause you know, that's probably going to be somebody's um, work shirt, you know, out at the ranch or something. So they're not going to, they're not going to mind some stains. Uh, don't see the label. Okay. So this is kind of frustrating. So I got a, uh, and this is like a little air with my employee. So she took a picture of this Polo Ralph Lauren, and it was a black and white plaid long sleeve button shirt. It's in my store right now for $29.99 plus shipping. It's a linen blend, but the fabric tag is, is cut out. So she didn't take a picture of the cutout tag, like where the spare buttons are and then the tag is. She just took like the regular photos minus the tag. Now, I told her, you know, you always need a picture of the tag, but since that wasn't there, she didn't take the picture. But whenever I felt the item... No, no, I didn't even feel the item. She already had it in the bag with the photo. I could tell through the photos that it was linen blend, but I'm not sure if it was 100% linen. So in the listing, I put material tag is torn out. I It has some linen contents in it, but I don't know the full percentage. And then somebody sent an offer of $21.50 plus shipping and said, fabric content, please. Don't see fabric label. Thank you for your thoughtfulness. I put that in the condition. I, I don't know why. So they didn't read the whole listing is what I'm getting at. So that's a problem. People just look at title and photos. So if your title and photos are good, the rest of that item specific stuff, it doesn't even matter. People just don't even read it. So would you accept the offer? $21.50. I just listed it today or wait for $29.99. I'm going to have to message them back because I don't want them not wanting to buy it because the tag isn't there. So I'm not even going to accept it until they message back is what I'm going to do. So I'm going to say, um, please read condition, condition, description description um i put describe description ship description and then i'm going to say um material tag is missing is missing but there is linen in this shirt and then uh, the, and then it's they're probably gonna be like oh how do you know there's linen like just feel it you know linen it's thin it feels thin i mean once you know you know but there is linen linen in this shirt in this shirt i just do not know how much because i don't you know i'm not a expert in clothes 
And usually I say I apologize for the inconvenience. That seems to be like a pretty good line that I use uh, very often. But let's just let that roll. I will accept that offer, though, if they say that's fine. No one design says counter 2281 and disclose the tag is missing. No, I don't want to do that because I don't want to lose the sale. Like pretty much you have the sale right now when they buy, if they buy, that's true. They could not buy and you wouldn't have it. But she obviously, or this he or she, I don't know who it was. They obviously didn't read the condition. So by countering, they may just say, oh, screw this person. Like they may not even get the message. They may not read the message in the, the counter offer. So um that's why I'm going to leave it open and just do it through the messenger. And honestly, that shirt is a good shirt. Had it had the linen tag in there, I would have listed it for probably like $35.99. Or no, probably like $39 or $49.99 because Ralph Lauren linen is just really good. And that's a plaid one, which I don't see plaid having the linen very often. Usually it's the solid colors. Let's read. No one design says true religion is dropped on the shorts. Oh, the shorts are up though. That's STR. Interesting. Um, flip it good. Yeah, I said, Hey, I hope I, I hope I said, Hey, to you. I might have forgot that. Alex said, I sold a shirt missing two buttons, was about to toss it, but I listed anyway, profited one dollar. I'll take it. Yeah, two buttons is kind of a lot. One button I definitely list, and if it has the spare buttons, you know, I'll do that. And I definitely take a picture and note there's spare buttons in there. But two buttons is a tough one, man. I usually get pretty upset if I see two buttons missing. Do you list from your phone or computer? Miss Lachey says, From the computer, absolutely. This was Workrite. Workrite is one of those uniform type slack brands. This is a fire resistant. I bought seven of these at three bucks a piece, and this sold for $19.99 plus $8.99 shipping. So um, I've been selling them here and there. Oh, STR, sell through rate. <laughs> Sorry, man. I'm lagging on the uh, acronyms. Sell through rates on shorts are up. Cool. True religions are pretty, I mean, you know, they're decent, but what happens with a lot of like popular, popular brands is they may have a claim to fame in one category or one like specific thing, like shoes or like, you know, Puma track shoes are pretty popular, but then it's like their track suits are fine, but then they start branching to every other thing and it's not as good. Like, would you buy like a Puma sweater? Like, I don't know, maybe, but I feel like that's what true religion did. Like their jeans, right? Where their claim to fame. <laughs> And then they're like, oh, let's just do everything. And then they started making like just less quality or just not really being the best at it. So. Let's see. Miss Lachey says the full description is not easy for the buyer to see anymore without clicking something extra. Yeah, I know. Tell me about it. My full descriptions are pretty just copy paste title and um, I have like a little blurb that's always on there. It's in one of my videos. I think that real popular video that I had, man, it'd be nice to have another really popular video. I just, I think I'm not like, I'm not my, I'm not creative enough on my, on my videos like that hometown thrift video. Like I thought that would do good, but honestly there just wasn't enough good thrifts. Like my town does not have the thrifts. It's not the place to thrift. This is a faded Ralph Lauren pink short sleeve polo i say faded meaning like it's probably been washed like 50 times uh went for nine dollars plus 8.99 shipping if the condition of the ralph lawrence are faded i try not to spend more than three dollars because it's going to be tough to get uh 25 on these like this one went for you know 18 so three into 18 you know it's cool if it's first class i can i can dig it can you dig it? Midwest Life says, drop by drop is the water pot filled. <laughs> is that a saying for um, just like eating up the little sales maybe? Let's see. And no one design says, I know a reseller that used this method. If the tags are missing on clothing, the first photo, he puts a sticky note on the photo saying tag is missing. Pretty good. A little extra step, but that's a, that's a good one for customers. I'm a big believer in um, the, the flaw being second. So so had that tag photo been taken, I would have wanted it second in the photo line. So when they swipe through, oh, what's this? A tag is missing. That's why I put the flaws in the second slot for photos. Okay. This is a cool one. This was uh, Salt Life. You guys pick up a lot of Salt Life, the crew necks, the long sleeves. I pick them up. This one, anything like flag, um, 
Patriot related, uh, cool fish on it. You know, I'll pick those up. This was a black one. It went for eight eighteen plus eight ninety nine. So at eighteen dollar mark, or the seventeen dollar mark, is fine for t shirts. Or this is a long sleeve, but nonetheless, three dollar item. Let's see. Um, Midwest Life says you're right. Don't accept the offer. I just want to make sure they they they're getting what they expect, you know. And that's one of the notes I'll put for my employee when she comes in is like, hey, that one item there was the tag was cut out. Like, take a picture of that tag because that's considered a flaw in the shirt, in my opinion. Oh no, the belly! I'm really trying to work, man. I'm really trying to work on uh, just being more fit for my son because I know. He's going to be playing sports, and then we're going to be going, and there's going to be, like, 25-year-old dads, and then I'm going to be, like, the fat older dad. And I'm not, like, fat, but, man, I was trying to do, like, push presses the other day and bench press, and I don't even want to talk about those numbers. We'll just stick to the eBay numbers. But they're low, like my eBay sales. I'll tell you that. I mean, I don't know. And then it's like you don't want to risk injury now, too, right? I risk injury, and I can't work as fast. That's a problem. But this shirt's too small, man. I wore this shirt today because I like the shirt, but I bought a medium or not, I didn't buy it. They gave me a medium and I needed a large because all this stuff shrinks all the freaking time. So uh, this next sale, this is a women's clothing sale and I'm going to get into more women's items if I can get like cheap or free inventory. This, I mean, look at this shirt here. Great, great coloring. This was a uh, torrid long sleeve button shirt. It's an XL striped. So yellow pinks purple like this is nice summer colors and stuff it went for eleven dollars and one cent plus 8.99 shipping so 20 bucks shipped for the torrid long sleeve button shirt so that's a pretty cool pretty cool little thing pretty cool little thing let's see what sort of sell through of an item do you go for percentage in 90 days 25 percent i'll go 20 percent too 20 um, percent sell through Pretty much what I do. And I know that that sounds a bit insane, but I sell stuff a lot cheaper than other people and my photos look pretty good compared to others. And then I also have a, a much bigger store. So I think eBay favors some of my stuff over um, other people's. That's why I do it. I could be completely wrong, but that's, that's what I do, man. 20%. Life of him. How is it like thrifting in Dallas? Do you like thrifting in Oklahoma over Dallas? The reason I like Dallas better is because I have friends there. So sometimes I run into friends. Sometimes I go get coffee or lunch with friends there. Um, the drive to Dallas, in my opinion, is better than the drive to Oklahoma City. Um, Oklahoma City, I don't know if it's because of the marijuana thing, but it seems like, I mean, don't get me wrong. Dallas has its fair share of like uh, homeless and like rough people. But Oklahoma just seems like there's more of that. And thrift stores are almost like, I don't know, it just seems like it attracts that type of person. So you have to be more on guard when you're in those places. And then, and mind you, I'm, I'm buying like a lot of items and spending a lot of money. So, um, and my car is not like the most low key car, like that blue Civic, the, the boost blue, it's pretty noticeable. So I'm constantly always worried about people um, breaking in or just things like that. So Dallas is a little bit better. And honestly, I go to like more of the wealthier parts of Dallas and uh, Dallas is, is much more wealthy than Oklahoma too. So mind you, there's going to be more, um, there's more like professional, like athletes, golfers. There's just way more money in, um, the metroplex of Dallas Fort Worth area. So, um, that's why I would say, but it is nice to, uh, to try out the other stores, you know, and, um, it's not my main route for sure. It's definitely Dallas, but I do, um, I do, I do go there, you know, whenever I, what is it when you have a wild hair and you're like, oh, let's go. Let's go check out uh our our sister state. Let's just let's call it, let's call Oklahoma the sister state state or the crazy cousin state. This is a Harley Davidson. It's a short sleeve mechanic shirt. Make sure to put mechanic if you guys are selling this. I think it's a great keyword for it because the guy that's wearing this is probably wrenching in the shop. It sold for twenty dollars plus shipping. It just says uh I think it just says Harley Davidson across the top with like Kind of like a basic, I don't know, like a basic like cu couple stripes. It's nothing crazy, no back print. So if you get an embroidered back print one, you can sell that for 40, 50 bucks. Uh, this one is pretty basic though. And I did have it listed high, but uh, sometimes you just got to take the 30, the 20 plus shipping. Let's see. 
Next up, we got REI. And we're like a, we're only like a half through half of a box. This is REI. It's a long sleeve button shirt. This went for $12.47 plus shipping. So you're right at like $20, $21, $20 and a half dollars. So how is the best way to gain more followers, Armando Vargas? Are you trying to do um, reselling content or you mean following on social media? Is that your question? Mm, no one design says I pick up items with sell through rate at least 70%, but I'll pick up 50% of an item if it's crazy design or fabric content or unique. Yeah. I mean, if I hear you, I hear you. I just, I don't know, man, I have a hard time finding all that stuff because I have to go to Dallas and it's only once a week or Oklahoma city once a week. I think what I'm going to start doing though is, is shopping more. I may have to go to Dallas twice to find some uh, better items and for items to sell like in my store. Cause that's going to be a different um, buyer, right. And a different, different vibe because in the store, maybe I can get 15, 20 bucks in person rather than having to do all the listing and shipping. But that's a good, that's a good tip. If you're new, definitely go for what uh, no one design says. Like you definitely want to go a little bit higher for, for me. I mean, I'm okay making $5 on a slow item because you know, it adds up when you have a lot. Armando says I put my eBay on international. It seems to slow down what, that bad to do uh, i put my ebay on international sales i guess it seems to slow down was that bad to do um i don't know the, the problem with international sales like if you do international direct i don't know if you're talking about global shipping is um international direct i would get a lot of messages in a foreign language and then i'd have to do the google translate and try to like it would take a long time to answer those questions properly so i took international direct off and I honestly don't get much. I almost get zero, uh, almost no international sales. So when I did international direct, I actually got more sales. So I'm not really sure um, why you're slowed down. But it's not a bad strategy. Just know it's more customer service because of the foreign, uh, the language barrier and, and stuff like that. No one design says people suddenly uh, turn on eBay international shipping. We'll find a store a bit slow because your traffic's being spread out international. You have to give it time to equalize. Yeah. I've, I've also heard if you do big changes to your store, you know, like you got to give it time to catch up and that's a big change. Cause all the, that would mean all the, all the items had to get re like re um, was he said like recalibrated, but like equalized. It has to be uh, updated, right? So you're updating all your listings at once. And you think it should happen like a light switch, but, you know, stuff has to move for that to happen, you know. So, yeah, give it time. I think you'll get more sales, honestly, especially the Canadians. Um, they want that better shipping rate. Just make sure you know what you're doing. If you do heavy items, you can really get uh, eaten up on shipping if you're not careful. If you don't know exactly what the rates are. This is an L.L. Bean long sleeve Henley. This is a large tall, though. So it went for $9.10 plus um, $8.99. So. Yeah, I mean, Henleys, man, in the winter, I sold a lot of Henleys. Like, they are great sellers in the winter time. The summer, still sell, just not as not as great. Let's see. Uh, yeah, Armando, ask me what you're talking about growing a follower. If you're talking about YouTube or Instagram or just whatever, I can give you, like, some advice. I'm not the best at it, but it... I have some advice on that. No one design says Taylor, if you have an employee, utilize them and attack multiple stores in your major cities to maximize their sourcing. Yeah. I don't know, man. Have you, how would you do it though? Because it's very, very difficult to find profitable items in the thrift stores now with the price. I mean, I like using them for photos the most because um, they can almost do photos as fast as me. But if I had them source a store, they may not find any profitable items in that store. Because, I mean, it, you just it's just not like, like before, whenever everything was like really cheap, I guess you could say, hey, find these brands under three bucks. But I don't think sourcing is the best use of an employee. I think that's, I think that's very challenging. Very challenging. And honestly, like I run, I run a 15 hour day. So like, I don't think she's going to work 15 hours or I don't know. I don't even know if that's legal to have them work 15 hours in a row. But, um. I have thought about taking her to my local stores and seeing how she does. But honestly, the local stores, um, 
they're just not, they're not, there's not that many good stuff. One thing I do want to do is like, if I get another bulk lot of free inventory or start getting more free inventory, I want to show her how I process it. So she can process like really low value stuff and, and go that route. And I'll just stick to getting a, a little bit better stuff. But yeah, I don't, I don't, um, I don't know how that would work. Exactly. I don't know how many people can even run a 15 hour sourcing day and that's including drive time, you know, two and a half hours each way, but it's a lot. It's a lot of energy. This is a pair of Oakley golf shorts. This is, um, I think it was like black. Yeah. Black plaid. It went from 1999 plus 899. So a lot of people, I mean, Under Armour golf shorts haven't been as good as, as they once were, but Oakley always seems to be pretty good. And then, um, you know, the, some of the golf brands do good. This one did pretty, pretty good though. I mean, about 30 bucks on some golf shorts. I'll take that. I'll take the liner. It was 8.2. So let's see if we can get it under eight. This one. Do you guys use the um, fast food apps like the McDonald's, Chick-fil-A, Chipotle app? I just found out about them. Oh, Armando, you're trying to get more sales on your eBay store through social media? That's a good idea. Dang, man, it still didn't go under eight ounces. So, yeah, share it all over the place. With social media, the biggest thing is being consistent. If you guys have noticed, like, my pattern, it's um, one live a week on either Saturday or Sundays. Right now it's Sundays. And then I'm doing um, – a video I try to launch on Tuesday and then I try to launch a video on Friday. And the one video on Tuesday is always my best sales of the week because it's a pretty easy video to make. And then on Friday, I try to like think of a good video to make for you guys, like a more creative video. Um, and you'll notice a lot of other creators run a similar formula because that's all it really is, man. It's, it's input output, get the algorithms used to seeing like, Hey, he posts a reel every couple days. He posts a community post, uh, just different things. I would try to do, um, you wouldn't really want them to order from your eBay store, but if you could get somebody to like buy a couple items, then you could just take them down and, and sell them in person. And that's going to make you more money. So if, if that's what you're looking for, but if it, it's, it's hard to say like, come shop my eBay store, unless you are like 100% one category. So like I have a lot of men's tops, but even that, I mean, you'd almost want to have like all fishing gear or I know a store that's all new with tags, like golf polos and things like that. So it's just very hard to say, like, I don't know what type of store you run, but if it's just a bunch of random clothing sizes, it's very difficult to promote your store as like, hey, come to my used clothing store where you may not find your size in something you like. That's that's why it's hard to do that kind of thing. So I wouldn't I wouldn't be too concerned with the followers on eBay because before uh, YouTube, I had like less than 300 followers on eBay and I was still making tons of sales. So People are just Googling the item most likely and they're like finding it and finding your store because eBay's putting that ad in front of them. And that's how I think a lot of it works, you know, or they go to eBay because they click on one of the listings and then they see the full front page and they scroll down a little bit and then your photo sticks out and it says, boom, that's a good photo. Let me check that shirt out. They click into it. They like the price and bam, you got the sale. I honestly like would like to do a, um, like a point of view of an eBay shopper looking at my store and like going through their mind process. And I can make it up of what I think it would be. Or if like I was buying something, how I would buy on eBay, because you go on, you want to really get into the mind of the buyer. Like why are they going to click on your item and why are they going to buy it? Like, do your photos look good? Does the title look good? Does the price just is too good for them to pass up? Like a lot of people will ask me, Hey, can I get a discount? Can I get more of a discount on shipping? Your shipping's too high. I say, hey, go to another store because it seems like my prices are too high. Well, guess what? The reason they're at your store asking is because you're already one of the best prices or you have a more confident looking item and the other one's priced a little low, but they'd rather pay you know, what the lower one is with your better item. But guess what? If you have something going for you, do not sell yourself short. You know, like There's a reason why people buy from the, from other people because they, they feel confident in it. And there's something about it that they trust and, and they're getting a good deal. Like that's all. That's how I think about it. Hang on a second. Let me get this label going. 
Yeah, I talk about the um, the food apps because I do the Chick Fil A one, and I just did a thing where they said uh, fill out a survey and we give you a free Chick Fil A sandwich. So I'm waiting for it to come because I may use it today, even though I had Chick Fil A yesterday. But that's why they give you the deals because then you just keep coming back for more and more rewards. Uh, I don't see nothing. My rewards. They said take up to 24 hours if there's rewards, man. And if it don't come in 24 hours, I'm going straight to the head chicken and I'm asking them, hey. I did your survey, man. What's the deal? Where's my chicken sandwich? Gabriel says it's Sunday, brother. Dude. <laughs> Chick-fil-A's only weakness. Their only weakness is being closed on Sunday. Damn them. Ah. Ah, man. Shoot, man. Shoot. Maybe that's why they didn't give me the reward because they shut everything down on Sundays. Although, I did submit a survey on a Sunday. No one design says, I hear you and understand because you are in an area with low-end items. But if I was you and I was in your area, I would set aside half a day of sourcing with your employee and high-end stores. There's no high-end stores. There are like cinch and area sellers. You're talking about retail or you're talking about thrift stores because, uh, let's see. This way, I know I will have double the chance to pull as much higher-end items before other people snatch it up. Yeah, I wish I could take you sourcing with me, No One Designs, because the way it works when I go sourcing is this. Dallas, okay, Dallas alone is 1.2 million people, right? It's one of the higher populated cities in the country. For or like all these other surrounding counties or like cities are like bigger than my city and way more wealthy. So each one of those areas, like regions, there's probably like a handful of 200,000 plus eBay sellers that are all in the men's category, like men's tops and polos and, and things like that. So when I go to the thrift stores in Dallas, the first or second or third one, I have the highest chance of getting the most items because I'm one of the first people into the store. Later in the day, I'm like scrounging the bottom of the barrel. Like I can tell resellers have been there, been there, but I know how to make like seven, eight bucks profit on the items they're passing up on. So like to have me go to the thrift stores with my employee, like I, it's just it's just such a very difficult thing. Now, I can tell you if I can get inventory in and also the more they work with photos and, and see the items, the more they see in their mind, like this is an item I take a photo of. This is what I can buy. But the price on these things, like I hit sales days, like if it's if it's six ninety nine for a long sleeve polo Ralph Lauren, like are you buying it it's like a size large blue plaid? Do you buy it at seven dollars and plus tax at seven fifty uh, seven fifty seven? So it's very difficult to say, hey, spend $7 of my money and I'm also paying you for this hour to find an item and then the item doesn't profit much. Like, um, It's a very tricky thing. It's a very tricky thing. But it is doable. People do it all the time. So let's see. I have two part-time guys plus me and on a Wednesday we hit 15 stores and pick up about 60 items each. Hmm. Yeah. Maybe if I wonder, are they just going to the racks? But yeah, I don't know, man. I don't know. There is a workaround. I know people that does this method because they have no high end thrift stores. Yeah, no. Okay. So if every item, yeah, if, if every item was, let's say everything was five and under, even at that, like a condition of a Ralph Lauren polo short sleeve, like we talked about, if it's beat up, Five bucks, I'm not buying it, especially if it's a solid color. Those don't sell fast. If it's three dollars, though, for some reason that three dollar mark, I'm okay with. But if I had them go to the bins, then maybe. But then, I mean, like, I don't know how much you're paying your employees, but like, I want to be there to kind of like help them, right? I mean, help them along. Um, it's it's a difficult thing, but I will tell you this: the more they list, the more they get used to seeing the items you're used to buying, and that is that is a big advantage. And also, I'm trying to make this big enough so that she can just manage my buy sell trade store. So she's the main manager, and then she has one person under her that's doing photos and listings. Uh, that's the goal. So I just I need to be the one acquiring inventory because I've sold the items. Like I know the profit margins, I know the sell through rates, like all that stuff. I've been doing for the last few years and that's, that's how I'm trying to figure it out. But yeah, it's, it's tough. I mean, I get it. I get it. 60 items for a person. Like that's awesome. That's awesome, man. Half a day, 60 items. Like I can, I, I barely do that. Well, no, I definitely do that in Dallas, but like in my hometown, I can sometimes do that on like one day a week when they restock, but um, I cannot do it every day. 
people say like you can find all these items every day like not in my town you have to go to uh you have to drive two and a half hours each time you want to do that and then and then you may run into a crusher like i don't know if you guys know but like in your cities do you have guys like me that go in there and they buy like a giant cart full and you can't find anything because when i go if someone comes behind me in my category trust me they're not finding a single thing to sell unless they want like a super slow item or they want a margin less than five bucks like profit because I, I buy it all i try to buy every single thing sometimes i'll even pay like nine bucks for a shirt if i know i'm only going to make five just to keep it out of the hands of somebody else because i don't want them to get it on the sale day right so yeah I, i'm trying i try to be as ruthless as possible <laughs> i want people to know like my like yeah i, I don't want people um you know, like, hey, this thrift store never has anything. Well, guess what? Because I'm there every week. Like, I'm the one that's getting everything. The problem is I have to keep it kind of mixed up because then uh, people start, like, changing their routes to, to beat me out and stuff. So that's why it's it's about getting items in person, right? And that's, that's why, like, I don't care if I have to pay a few bucks to somebody or even pay, like, you know, three or five bucks a shirt. If somebody's going to give me a bunch of area long sleeve button shirts, I'm going to pay them five bucks a piece and then – you know, the best I can. So let's see. Uh, it's crazy. No one designs has the red or the orange with the end. And then that, the other one came in big pop of pump it has the blue with the red. So it's a little, little uh, tricky to decipher who's saying what big pop of pump says sending an email to Dallas to buy overpriced thrift items, then pay them on top of the high items. Doesn't sound good. Sending an email to Dallas to buy overpriced thrift items, then pay them on top of that high item. Oh, sending an employee to Dallas to buy overpriced thrift items. Yeah, big pop and pump. I mean, um, I think if you sent them to the bins and you said, hey, look, we're looking for this type of stuff, like very little flaws, then you're spending, you know, you can afford it. But yeah, I mean, the thing is like the drive time to Dallas. So you got to pay them for windshield time. Like good luck paying some good luck getting five hours of an employee and not paying them to drive in a, to ride in a car, which I did work for a framing company and, and no, he did not pay for drive time. So if it was like 35 minutes away, guess what? Each time we had to drive that no pay. So I'm not that type of boss. I definitely want to pay him, but I don't, <laughs> I don't want to lose money with this, right? Like it's very difficult to balance cash flow when you have, um, when you have a lot coming in and a lot coming out. I mean, now I don't have that problem as much, but before I used to have that uh, fear of not having enough money. So, now we're doing okay. We're doing okay. Uh, this is um, Larry Mahan. Mahan? Larry Mahan. He, I think he, he does boots as well. This was a pearl snap. It's like a gray stripe. Went for $15 plus $8.99. So that's right at the $25 mark. And ideally, this Larry Mahan is the exact type of shirt that I want to put in my buy sell trade store because we have a lot of um, like cowboys, roughnecks. We have a lot of um, mainly those guys, and I think they're gonna like like a cool pearl snap, like a western shirt. And then we also have a lot of people wearing t-shirts nowadays. So I need to like go out to the bars and the clubs, the clubs, the like country, you know, um, boot scooting type of uh, dance dance places, and just see what the guys are wearing, right? And then try to understand like what they want to see. Like they may not see Robert Graham a lot. Maybe I bring some nice Robert Graham's or maybe they think that's too like um, feminine or something, you know, like uh, there's a lot of tough dudes in this town and I want to try to understand what they want to buy. Right. And then I also am looking at the retail price of like a cinch or an area because I want to, um, you know, I don't want to be like, I don't want to, okay. I sell like those Wrangler Pearl Snaps from Walmart. I sell them for almost the value of Walmart. I'm not going to put that in my store for $15 when they're like, dude, this is a Walmart shirt I can get for free. I'm going to put something that's like $50 or $100 for like $20 to $25, the retail, right? So that they see, oh, well, there's no way I can get this shirt without dropping $50 to $80 bucks on one new shirt. They can come to my shop and spend $20, you know, $15, $20, $25, whatever it is. Oh, here's another Harley Davidson shirt that sold. This one was actually a bit cooler. This one has um, the embroidery on the back, and it's got a skull. But I took $21 plus shipping because, um, well, I mean, I just wanted to take the sale, right? 5G says Florida Gang. Yep. Okay. I usually say Flow Rider. 
but I can't spell. So that's like a, a spelling technique. Uh, no one design says, yeah, my area, all polos doesn't matter. The brand new with tags that are priced at three eighty nine, even button ups, jeans, jackets. I think your issue is uh location. Yeah. Hey, you're in a really great spot, man. Cause my thrifts used to be that way too, but they bumped it to four ninety nine in the last like uh, six months or so my local thrifts. And honestly, like they just, there's, there's a lot of half off like deals and stuff. And then I have one thrift store. It's two ninety nine for tops, but they don't get the best quality. They actually have an expansion store in that video. You might've seen it's their boutique store and they price everything. Now they dropped it to five. It used to be like 10. They dropped it down. So it's about five a shirt is what I'm looking at. So I'm trying to always find like um, better deals, better ways to get more inventory, you know, s- slower sell through spine. But I think the buy sell trade is going to be the, the ticket. I think that's going to be the ticket. Dang, I may not even finish, man. I'm going to have to get off here pretty soon. I got a lot of items to pack. This stream's at 55 minutes though. So we'll go a little longer because I know a lot of people like watching this um, and listening to it while they're doing photos. And trust me, I know an hour is not really enough to go through when you're doing a photo section, a session, photo session. Gloria says, I'm going to the head chicken. Yeah. <laughs> Mayha, not Maha. Oh, Mayhan, not Mahan. <laughs> Robert, thank you. <laughs> Yeah, Big Papa says, do people uh, not message you and complain about shipping price? I charge a flat $4.99 for first class and people are messaging me about it. Yeah, um, people absolutely cannot stand the shipping price being so high. But, um, I mean, they can always go somewhere else, right? So, I still get the sales coming in. It is one of my, like, least starred uh, things. But, hey, it's Mother's Day. We're going to wrap it up. Uh, I'm going to hang out. I need to get some food in me, too. I apologize for the first stream. It is deleted, so don't worry about it. But um, we will be back on regular schedule. Hopefully Tuesday I'll have the best of what sold video. And then um, Friday I need to think about a good idea for a video. And then we'll, we'll hit it again next week with the live. So I appreciate all you guys that uh, stuck with me and then jumped over to this live after the little mishap on the first one. So I'll see you next time. Take it easy, guys. Happy Mother's Day. Bye.